All right, in this CSS tip today, we're going to be looking at the CSS multi-column property. Remember, all the code I cover in the screencast today will be available down in the Scrimba site, so you can play around with the code live in the link in the description. Follow along. All right, our first property here is going to be the CSS multi-column property. And as we take a look here at the little sample code, I've just got an HTML file open, and this HTML file simply has a div, and this div is acting as a parent tag for all these individual paragraphs. You can see each of the paragraphs over here just kind of stack on top of one another. And as I resize the browser preview wider, you can see this is the behavior by default. So what this CSS multi-column property allows us to do is to wrap content within individual paragraphs that then flow into the next paragraph across columns. So let's take a look. So we're going to come up here to the CSS sheet, and we're just going to add one little rule to start off. It's going to be a uh, multi-call. This references the ID that we have there on that parent div. And we're going to set this guy to have a columns. That's the name of the property, the new one. And we're going to set it to auto and 25 EM or our M value. And let's go ahead and just refresh this, make sure that's working. And then notice now what happens when I pull this across. See how my browser is automatically reorganizing each of these columns into the column layout, which is really cool. And here's the cool thing. Notice that this paragraph actually flows up into the next paragraph and continues on depending on the width of the screen here. So pretty fancy things. Now let's just go ahead and show you one or two other properties here. I'm going to add another one called the column-gap. I'm going to set this to two M's. And this column dash gap property is a bit of a teaser because I'm going to have an upcoming video on that. So column dash M. And uh, let's go ahead and refresh this. And you can see what that's going to do is it's going to increase the gap right here in between the columns. I can set that to whatever I want. I can increase this to six to really increase that gap, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just go ahead and set that back to two. And then lastly, there's a property in here that is called column-rule. And I can set that to, I'm just going to do 1M, and we'll set it to solid black for now. And let's go ahead and refresh over here. And we'll pull this out so we get our columns again one more time. And you can see what that does is it adds basically a rule in the columns, kind of like the HR or horizontal rule tag in between each of the columns. So. Pretty fancy what you can do with the CSS column layout. Now we're going to look at one more sample here. So I'm going to switch over to this 2.html. And you can see this one just has some same thing here. I have a div with the multi-call. And then I've got a whole bunch of children div just with labels in each individual one. So a bunch of children all wrapped inside of a single parent. So let's come over here to the 2.css file. And let's go ahead and open this up and add a little code in here as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the same thing. We're just going to add a multi-call property here and a few extra properties. So let's just outline these so we can see them easier. So I'm going to outline one pixel solid gray. And uh, let's go ahead and refresh over here. So that's going to add an outline around our wrapper there. And then we can actually explicitly set how many columns we want. So I'm going to set this to have three columns. Uh, for this particular layout here. And let's come over here and let's double check. Uh, whoops, I still have my uh, index.html. I need to come over here and preview my 2.html file. So let's come over here and rename this to 2.html. There we go. Now we're looking at the right thing. So I've got my 2.html file. You can see I've got my outline. And I've set that up into three columns. And they're just each of these divs is automatically flowing into those three columns no matter the width. So I can also come in here. Let's jump back to the CSS sheet. And I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to add a height of 300 pixels. And you can see that's just going to increase the height of this element. And let's go ahead and add a column-rule as well. And we'll just say one pixel solid black. You can see now that's adding that column rule on each of those columns. And then here's the last little fancy thing. We're going to add a column dash fill. Oops, I guess I think I, oh, I did spell that right. Column fill. And we're going to set this to balance. And uh, 
you can see what happens here. So when it's set to balance, I can switch this column fill to auto. And notice now that it automatically fills this way. And if I switch it back to balance, it's going to automatically balance these divs according to the room. So if there's enough vertical height to where all of them will fit, then auto comes into play. Now watch what happens when I take this height value and I set it down to something like 200. You can see there's not enough vertical height, so auto has to shift the other ones over to the second column. But if there is enough height, it'll just put them all in a single column. Unless I set this value to balance, then it's going to automatically try and distribute all of the children into equal amounts throughout the columns. So anyway, there's just a couple of the properties with the uh, CSS columns, which are really fancy and new. And I uh, hope you learned a tip on this little exercise.